Hi! It's September morning and it's been a while and thank you. Thank you God. I thank God for the grace of Jesus Christ, the good news that we always have with us. I thank the church for bringing us into this world as people of faith. Thank you also my friends for staying and keeping on journeying with me through these vlogs, my almost good reflections. Please feel free to share your thoughts and comments and suggestions in the comment section below. Peace. It's break time. How are you today? I always pray that at the moment this video finds you, you may all be in good health, happy and safe. Today is September 1, 2021, and our good news is coming from Luke chapter 4, verses 38 to 44. And it says, After Jesus left the synagogue, he entered the house of Simon. Simon, Simon's mother-in-law, was afflicted with a severe fever, and they interceded with him about her. He stood over her, rebuked the fever, and it left her. She got up immediately and waited on them. At sunset, all who had people sick with various diseases brought them to him. He laid his hands on each of them and cured them, and demons also came out from many, shouting, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and did not allow them to speak, because they know that he was the Christ. At daybreak, Jesus left and went to a deserted place. The crowds went looking for him, and when they came to him, they tried to prevent him from leaving them, but he said to them, To the other towns also I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God, because for this purpose I have been sent. And he was preaching in the synagogues of Judea. Today is Wednesday of the 22nd week in the ordinary time. And our good news today is, from synagogue to synagogue, Jesus works his way to show everyone what the kingdom of God is all about. I find our good news today beautifully begins with Jesus leaving the synagogue and ends by saying he was preaching in the synagogues of Judea. That is, from the synagogue at Galilee to the synagogues of Judea, he preached about the kingdom of God. So what is clear in today's good news is that Jesus preaches inside the synagogues while he do the actual works of healing, casting out demons, feeding the hungry, and all miraculous deeds in between an active and dynamic way of proclamation of how the kingdom of God works. So somehow Jesus 
not only preaches about the kingdom of God, but he allowed people to fully experience the kingdom of God in actuality through his healing ministry. So the great importance of the synagogue is that the synagogue is the gathering place, the gathering space for actual reading, listening, preaching about the kingdom of God. It is where the people go with the exact intention of learning, of knowing through reading, listening, and preaching, and worshiping together as the people of the covenant. That's why Jesus, Jesus ceased to eat, ceased to eat that he will go into this gathering place. Jesus himself, as a devout Jew, knows and understands the importance of the places of gatherings, for indeed it is where he will meet his people. However, as we have learned, he did not, he did not receive acceptance from those who seek to gather together for the covenant. They fell, they failed to comprehend that God is visiting them in person, in Jesus Christ himself. Well, if we put it on our time, if we update ourselves in today's time and age as Christians, we do not go to synagogues but to churches, right? With the same intention though and purpose, that is, a place that we can gather together a place that we can gather together to be able to read, hear, listen, and worship as the new people of God under the new covenant. Catechism 751 beautifully says, The word church, Latin ecclesia, means a convocation or an assembly. Also from the Greek, a kalein, to call out. So the church, the word church means a convocation or an assembly, according to Catechism 751. This tells us that it is God who calls out and invites people to gather together as an assembly. But more than just an ordinary assembly, more than just an assembly of the people, Catechism 752 tells us that in Christian usage, the word church designates the liturgical assembly, but also the local community or the whole universal community of believers. These three meanings is, are inseparable. The church is the people of God, gathers in the whole world. She exists in local communities and is made real as a liturgical, above all, Eucharistic assembly. She draws her life from the Word and the body of Christ and so herself becomes Christ's body. So my friends, as church, we gather together with Jesus and for Jesus, lively experiencing Him in the liturgy and in the Holy Eucharist. We are an assembly of people, litur both liturgical and Eucharistic. Okay? So the church is focused, focused only upon Jesus in her liturgies when the word is read and preached in the Eucharist where he is received in his fullness. Because, at catechism, because as Catechism 763 says, it was the sons, it was Jesus' task to accomplish the Father's plan of salvation in the fullness of time. Its accomplishment was the reason for His being sent. The Lord Jesus inaugurated His church by preaching the good news, that is, the coming of the reign of God promised over the ages in the scriptures. To fulfill the Father's will, Christ ushered in the kingdom of heaven on earth. 
The church is the reign of Christ already present in mystery. Friends, the kingdom of God is where Jesus Christ is. This is the unique role of the church to bring about Christ. The bride of Christ, the church, this is her unique role in this age of grace. To gather us all together as the church, the Easter people, we are an Easter people. Each time we gather together, we proclaim Christ resurrected from the dead. Catechism 770 states, The church in, is in history, but at the same time, she transcends it. It is only with the eyes of faith that one can see her in her visible reality and at the same time in her spiritual reality as bearer of divine life. Therefore, my friends, the church stands tall always and at all times and anywhere and everywhere, living up to her unique purpose of gathering together the entire people of God. Like, like the mother hen that gathers all her chicks under, the, under her wings to protect them and warm them with the love only a mother can give. In Catechism 772, it clearly states, It is in the church that Christ fulfills and reveals His own mystery as the purpose of God's plan. That is, to unite all things in Him. So my friends, as Jesus clearly states upon those who seek Him to stay with them, because to, other, to the other towns also, He said, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God, because for this purpose I have been sent. Therefore we too, all of us baptized, we too must carry with us the same sense of mission, mission of proclaiming the good news that the kingdom of God, the reign of God, is already at hand so that at the end of the day or at the end of each week, at the first day of the week, we can gather together as church to experience anew the fullness of Christ's presence in the liturgy of the word and in the holy sacrament of the Holy Eucharist the real body and blood, soul and divinity of Jesus Christ. You know, there is a beautiful part in the Mass during the offertory rites where the priest prays. He will say, he will pray, Pray, brethren, pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Then, the congregation, those in attendance, will pray in response, focusing on the very sacrifice that is Jesus Christ. We will pray, May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Friends, at this very moment, all our personal sacrifices made for the sake of the kingdom is now gathered together as one to form part of the very sacrifice that is Jesus Christ, holy and acceptable to God the Father. Now the question is, what sacrifices have you made in relation to the kingdom of God? Don't dare dream of something big. Start small by simply, freely and willingly act it out according to what your status in life demands. If you are a father of a family like me, do it with love. If you are also a husband or a wife, fulfill the demands of your title with love. If you are a son or a daughter, love your parents by respecting and humbly obeying them. Anything you do, do it as your status in life demands, freely and willingly, even if sometime 
it becomes burdensome. This is our daily sacrifices for the sake of the kingdom of God. Then bring them all in. Bring them all in into the church. Offer them jointly with that unique sacrifice that is Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Again, it does not have to be very special. It could just be your daily family tasks, wholeheartedly, willingly, and free, freely done as, a vis as visible signs of the presence of the reign of God in yourself, in your family, as a person, people of faith. You know, there are seven days in a week, right? Day one is for the Lord, Sunday, because we are Easter people. It is that special day when we gather together as church in the name of Jesus Christ through the invitation of the Holy Spirit. We gather to read, hear, listen, listen together Jesus himself and receive him totally in the Holy Eucharist. Days 2 to 6 are the days of living out our faith in action through the demands of daily life. These now become our sacrifices for the sake of the kingdom of God, especially when we think, say, and do things in faith. We then bring all of these May it be pains and joy, sweat and tears, all at the foot of the altar, where Jesus himself will become the ultimate sacrifice, totally acceptable to God, our loving Father. So my friends, the beauty of our faith brings us, brings us on a table, on a banquet with God himself. And the most beautiful part of that banquet is that Jesus Christ himself is the bread of life that we partake. So my friends, the church, the new synagogue for us Christians, our church, the church is where we gather together to fully experience the presence of God, to fully involve ourselves in the very dynamics of God's love here on earth. May the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Peace.